Welcome back, and it's shoe battle time. Today we're going to talk about Trickers versus Loke in the Adelaides. Now, uh, if you look on a website in the UK, the Belgrave runs at 395 pounds, where the Loke Trinity will run at 360 pounds. Uh, you know, these are uh, prices based on taking VAT out and import restrictions, so it might be a little bit different. Anyway, just uh, looking forward to uh, the battle, and let me know what you guys think. I'm always open to feedback. Thank you. Hey, I've organized all my playlists on this channel so that you're able to easily find different types of shoes, different brands of shoes, as well as uh, finding all my shoe battles, uh, worth the price shoe reviews, etc., all in one place. Enjoy. Welcome back, and today we're going to have a little battle of Adelaide's. And uh, these are two very, very famous established brands in the UK. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Loke Trinity, which is in the uh, top of the line of um, uh, shoes from Loke in their uh, uh, Loke 1880 export grade. And we're going to be comparing that with the Trickers Belgrave, uh, which is in their, um, it's a town shoe and uh, has very, very nice features on it. and. Uh, just this absolutely beautiful color, um, which is um, like this acorn, very, very light brown, the lightest brown shoe that I have in my arsenal. So uh, let's get started. So as we look at the shoes themselves, you know, one of the things that uh, we like to do on the channel is we like to look at some quantitative metrics as we compare the shoes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the stitch density, uh, both um, on, the, uh, on the cap Okay, for the upper stitch density. Keep in mind, um, uppers are almost always sewn by machine. Uh, so this is, uh, um, they're almost all, everything is sewn by machine, but how fast you do it on the machine and how careful you are uh, does impact the density. So we're gonna look at that. We're gonna look at it on the sole. Now um, on the uh, on the loke, we actually have uh, stitches that we can see at the bottom of the sole, but on the trickers, uh, the sole is actually closed and this is done a blind stitch. So what they do here is they actually will cut a small layer of leather out around all the way around the outside of the sole. They'll flip it back, then they'll cut the groove, they'll sew the sole on to the welt. Okay, and these are, um, uh, they're both 270 degree welts. And then, um, and then what they'll do is they'll actually glue it back on over it. Now, as the shoe ages, and you can see that I've worn these for a little while, but they don't have a lot of age to them. Uh, when, when you continuously wear them down, they will eventually show the stitching, okay? That's not a bad sign. It doesn't mean the shoes need to be sold or anything. It's just that there's a thin layer of leather around here that will wear down before they look like this, okay? So it just takes a little while, but the soles are still the thickness of the soles. And as you can see, the soles on the two shoes are, are relatively close in thickness, okay? They're both single soles. And so that will, um, they should last roughly the same amount of time. Now, I bought these uh, about a year ago now, um, and these are about six months old, uh, actually more like two or three months old. Um, so, um, and, and not a lot of wear on them yet, as you can see. Um, so that's uh, something that, uh, you know, obviously I'm, I'm working on uh, getting them into, into more of my rotations. So. Um, as we, uh, so we'll look at that. Then the next thing we'll look at is we will look at this waist. Uh, both of these shoes have a slight bevel waist on them. Okay. So there's, um, you can actually feel the, 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 the distance there. Now it is a little more pronounced on the look than it is on the trickers. Okay. Um, and so that will be there. And then we'll, we'll, but we'll measure the width of the waist and we'll measure the width of the heel. Okay. Two things that uh, can vary significantly from shoe to shoe. Um, as we go and as we operate in the same size. Now it is important to note from a size perspective, um, I have a nine and a half in the in the loke and a ten on the trickers, uh, because when I um, when I bought my first pair of trickers, um, I bought the uh, uh, the um, trickers Robert Derby and it was pretty tight as a ten, um, and now um, I have this which is pretty darn loose as a ten. Um, so I've got to put, put an insole in it when I wear it, but uh, works out uh, just fine all the same. So um, as we uh, as we look at them, we're going to look at uh, um, some other things as well. But right now, let's take a look at the measurement. 
So as we look at the measurements, they're very similar. Five centimeters per, or five stitches per centimeter on the tricker, six on the uh, loke, so a little bit better there. We have more consistency when it comes to the rest with three and three uh, on the sole stitch. Uh, so again, pretty similar. Uh, seven and a half on the waist, which we knew was a little bit bigger. Six and a half, so a whole centimeter less on the loke. Uh, makes a nice big difference there. Then you have eight centimeter heel on the... Um, uh, trickers and a seven and a half here on the look. So um, you can see the stitch density is not really that significantly different on the two shoes. Um, certainly, um, you know, there is some difference, but I think that as we, as we look at it, uh, it's not significant. They're both high quality shoes. And that's really why they make a good comparison because Loke and, uh, and Trickers, I mean, Trickers is one of the oldest shoe companies that's still in existence in the UK today, uh, back from 1829, I think. And um, uh, Loke is, uh, is later, quite a bit later, but it's still really, I mean, it, it's still 19th century, right? So um, they're both really well-established brands who have um, a lot of really, good traditional shoe value, right? Um, but they, they both are known for different things. Loke is a really good example of a company that went out and um, figured out about globalization. They set up factories in India. They've got um, seven different ranges and, and they're going about how to uh, define the top end of the shoe market and the bottom end of the shoe market in the UK, where Trickers, um, really took their um, history, really went in a different direction. They really got famous with boots, um, with um, the country boots and then the country shoe. And they happened to, um, because of demand and because, they, I mean, they are a bespoke maker as well, um, they, they created these town shoes. And, you know, the Adelaide, the Capture Adelaide is, is one of the um, most popular designs on the market today. And this is a very, very good example of that. And um, I think that that is, um, it's great that Trickers does it. But if, if you're looking at one pair of Trickers for, for your collection, then that's really what you'd like. Um, unless you're like me and you're just an absolute crazy nut about the Adelaide, um, you might want to, uh, you know, you, I, would, I would recommend going for like a Trickers Burton, which is a, uh, a, a wingtip derby and um, has the big, huge broguing on it. And I mean, it just screams trickers, um, where this is um, definitely more of a, tr a traditional town shoe. Um, um, but again, it's got trickers quality, it's got trickers heritage, and they put together a really nice shoe. So let's take a look at the lasts, because I think in the last themselves is where you can actually see some really interesting differences between the two brands. Now, um, the, the, this is on the uh, tower last, right? And, and the tower last is a round last that has this really nice sweeping area here on the foot, um, but has a very big cap, which, which I like. Um, and um, if you look at it here, right, I mean, it's just a straight rise and everything is rounded. So it's a good, rounded, comfortable shoe. From a style standpoint, it's also something that I would consider safe. Okay? Uh, it, it, it doesn't live on the edge and it doesn't have what I would consider to be a tremendous amount of style. Now, if I look at a Crockett and Jones, or I look at a George Cleverly, or I look at a Gaziano and Girling, that's different. Those have a lot of style, and you can get them on a lot of lasts with, you know, a soft chisel, a hard chisel, or the Deco, or you know, there's a lot of different options that are out there in order to be able to get that shoe that just looks perfect uh, for your style. Okay, and this is is not that. This is, hey, this is a shoe that every man can wear and have a place in their wardrobe. And it doesn't really matter what year it is, it's going to be in style. And, and that's got its place and, and that's a very, very fair thing. And also um, well and truly um, part of the shoe business, right? Now this has a lot more what I would consider to be style, okay? It has these beautiful ridges that come up here on the toes, okay? Uh, it has the little square part here, although it has a very high toe and a rounded toe, not, not, not an angular toe. Uh, it does that well. Now, the last itself um, also has that sweeping area here along the side, um, has a large cap, which is which is nice. Um, the heel caps on this are are very good. Um, the um, and the way the U throat comes in uh, is very good, but the U throat is not especially narrow. And they have um, the little tab here, which is a, again a stylistic thing that they decide to do. Now, you compare that to this. This U-throat is considerably more narrow at the top, 
okay? So it, it kind of goes from wide to narrow a little bit more. This, uh, the, the look is a little bit more consistent to it. Um, the other thing I notice when I look at this is the, um, and I think this may just be the coloring, but I feel like the squares on the broguing on the trickers come out a little bit more. Uh, and maybe that's because the brogue holes themselves are a little bit smaller. And so the squares uh, just look a little bit more defined because the hole is bigger in the loke. Again, very, very small detail. Uh, something else that I think is really interesting, and, and I, this is, you know, I'm a shoe freak, so I, I tend to notice the, the weird, right? Um, but I noticed this first when I was looking at Alan Edmonds, um, the stitch, uh, the laces are very close to the edge of the, uh, of the facing, okay? Um, and that means that there, there's no pattern in the way the laces are. Now, when you look at some brands, okay, um, it, it can actually be more like a angle, like a, like a almost so that if you have a V gap, it still comes across straight. So it kind of starts wider and then it goes, um, goes narrow. Um, with, um, with these, and you know what, I happen to have a pair here uh, that, that shows what I'm talking about. And you see how it's wider. This is Crockett and Jones. It's wider down at the bottom. And then it kind of comes up here like this hourglass. See how that is? Okay. Now, um, back to Luke. Um, the look itself, I, I untie the shoes while I'm showing them. I don't know why I do that. Um, has much wider laces. Okay. So these are set further back so that they do look like wider laces when it's on. Now, that can have a very significant difference in a look while you're wearing the shoes. So if these were both the same color, they would look pretty different because this now, yes, this has flat laces and this has round laces, but the, um, the distance that's there is significantly different, especially when this one is fully closed. You'll see that this is probably 30% narrower than these, okay? Yet the actual you throw it itself is wider, okay? Now, very, very small details. Nobody cares, but these are the kind of strange things that I notice as I'm looking at shoes. So, so that's that's an area that I think is interesting and um, uh, can 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 come into play. Now, there are other things, right? As you're looking at the um, uh, the heel counters, okay, um, you have um, this is a single piece of leather, so you know um, the clicking on the tr uh, on the loke is very very good. The skiving is very good. It's just a very smooth, uh, well put together shoe, okay, and it should be top of the line, right? Now trickers, I mean, this is part of their ready to wear. I mean, it's not part of their um, bespoke line, um, but it is a very, very high grade shoe. Now um, this um, skiving is not necessarily uh, as, as uh, I'm just gonna look at it here. It is very close, isn't it? Okay. Now you'll also see when you look at it, when you're like side by side like this, the cap toe is a lot bigger on the loke, okay? Um, and the also worthy of note, the U throat is longer on the trickers. So it goes further down your foot. Now that, that's always an interesting thing, right? Because as you look at um, when, when, they're, when they put a last on a shoe, okay? Um, they usually use the same piece of leather Okay, the same uh, uh, pre-made piece. They'll pre-make the piece and then they'll put them over several different lasts for size. So the proportion of, of uh, the, this piece to the cap is usually the same, but the length of the cap will change. The, the length of the sides will change. The, the, the proportion of the heel uh, also can change a little bit. But here, the proportions are really, really classic. Really well done. I don't see that it looks off in any way. Okay. Now um, it does have a little bit of a ridge here, but that ridge is also taken up by very, very small pinking on that cap toe. Now, when you meet, like, remember your mom had pinking shears and it cut the little uh, triangles in the paper. Um, this is on a shoe. It has that pinking and it's very, very fine. Now that means 
that it's harder to work with for the shoemaker because they've got to sew as close to that pinking as they can in order to get in there and not have it stick up, right? You can kind of see how they did that there and it's, uh, it's really very, very close to the edge. In fact, it looks like they have a double set of stitches there. It's so close. Now we look here and that pinking is there, but that's massively different pinking. Okay. So a small difference. Now, the other thing that you'll notice here is the holes are at the bottom of the box. Where if you look at the, the brogue holes on the trickers, they are more in the center of the box. Although you can kind of see this one here is toward the bottom. Okay, so that's a difference as well. Now, um, that is somebody actually running the leather through a machine, cutting the holes, okay? Or lining up a, um, like a die and hammering it and cutting the holes. So, and I don't know how they do it at these particular factories, every, every place is different, but um, the fact that it's, there's a little bit of unevenness to that um, is always interesting to me. That, that is another area that, that I tend to look at. And candidly, I like the variation in that because I feel like that means that there's a lot of handwork with it and people are people, right? If it was all done by machine, it would all be the same every single time, okay? So, um, so, so I think that that's, a, that's an interesting area. Um, the heel caps themselves and the, and the length of the heel caps is, um, is, is interesting as well. The trickers, okay, is visibly longer, but so is the heel. And that's weird, right? Why is the heel wider? Look at that. Isn't that bizarre? I mean, it's just, it's longer. And I don't know why, but it also feels really, really solid when you're walking. And maybe that is why. So um, just, just, an interesting, uh, just an interesting piece there. Now the rest of the shoe, you know, the, the, the channel, the closed channel on this is, is, I mean, that's more expensive. You don't see it on every brand. A couple of the Spanish brands are doing that now and they're doing a great job with it. So like a Carmina or a TLB, you'll see the, the, the blind stitch. And then you see the blind stitch on the high end all the time. Um, so it's a, a, it's a nice thing to see. And really for the difference between, I think it's 395 pounds and 360 pounds, that is not a bad differential. Uh, for that level of uh, difference in the shoe. So um, again, something something interesting to see. Um, you know, I do think that it's um, also interesting to see that uh, um, uh, as we as we look at it. So um, as as uh, as the the trees go, um, the trees are interesting as well. And and I, I think that this is uh, you know they a lot of these companies will have the trees made for by the uh, by the last company, right? And, and these are, are probably part of that, okay? Uh, and I, I'll tell you, I mean, these look exactly like my, my church's trees. Um, so not, not a surprise there, um, but they're, they're nice trees. They're not ultra fancy or anything. Um, and and they, they hold the shoe together well. Um, I think they were 35 or 40 pounds, okay? So not a, uh, not a terrible difference. Now, um, I have seen trees go way higher than that. Um, so it all depends on what you're looking for. Um, I've even seen some three-piece trees that are in the you know, 200 and, and up. Um, so um, it all depends. Now, this is the tree for the trickers, right? Um, and um, the overall shape is similar, um, certainly more defined, um, but this is lime wood. Um, and I think that the uh, loc is cedar. Um, so that's a pretty big difference. And of course the staining is very, very nice on this as well. And as I said, when I did my unboxing for these, if you know where to go, there are a lot of the shoe dealers have a trickers club and um, that's how I got these. And you can get a discount on the shoes and free trees. And the trees are like 60 bucks. So if you, um, 60 pounds. <laughs> so if you start looking at, uh, you know, being able to, to get a better deal on the shoes, uh, that can make a significant difference uh, for you when you're talking about 20% of the price of the shoe. So, um, or even 15% of the price of the shoes, case may be. So as, as we look at this, you know, um, the, the soles are, I'm gonna say that the bevel on the, the loc is better, okay? And I, and I think that that's better. It does have a comfort difference. 
um, and and I do like that. Um, I think that the um, uh, if you have a really um, high end step, I think that this can be a little bit uh, better for you. I think that the Loke is better um, for um, maybe like a medium end step. They're both very very good, and as I said before, they're slightly different sizes, although the length on them is is nearly identical. Um, when we um, when we look at the um, the quality of the tongue, this is another area that uh, we don't usually talk about, but I think is is interesting. Um, when a lot of shoes now have been getting into this, um, and and I I have a lot of shoes, so maybe I just notice things that other people wouldn't. Um, but I tend to not like when they have this little piece of leather sticking up over the tongue. Okay. Um, and they have the, the, the lining here. Sometimes they have the lining so it doesn't even go all the way around. So like the edges have stuff that's flapping over. And I'm really not a fan of that. Uh, but I'm, um, this has the broguing line above this. Now this, if it is really high on the foot, this makes this part softer. Um, and it feels nicer to have a softer piece if it's really, really high on your foot. I tend to not like it that high on my foot to begin with. But you can also see that this comes up a little bit out of the shoe when you're when you're there. So it, it's supposed to be on the high side on your foot, okay? But I'm not really a fan of that. I don't consider that to necessarily be a desirable trait. Again, that's design. This is not quality, that's design. Um, but here, when you look at how they do it at the triggers, okay? This lining goes all the way to the edge, covers the broking. And when you look at where it is on the shoe, it's about the same. So it does stick out of the shoe, just about the same uh, area. Now, um, so does this feel a little bit stiffer when you walk? Slightly, I wore them Monday. So, I mean, it hasn't been that long. And um, yes, it does feel a little bit stiffer, but not remarkably so. And I really find that this is a lot nicer. I have a pair of Gaziano and Girlings that have the, the broguing uh, come out and it kind of curls in and you gotta, it can actually kind of bother me. So I, I, I like this where it's tighter, uh, better. So again, uh, really anal retentive comment there, but uh, you know, these are the kind of things that I notice. And uh, you know, as I, as I look at shoes, um, you know, you get to decide, hey, this is what you like and this is what you don't. And, and that's just kind of the way uh, my thinking goes to it. Um, now let's talk about finishing. Um, we talked about the bottom of the soles and the bottom of the soles on the truckers are nicer, uh, but the soles are not the only thing that can be finished on a Goodyear welted machine or factory made shoe. Um, so as we look at the, um, the outsole here, um, they do an ironing where they, um, again, this is on the high end, um, they do an ironing here so that there's a really good line right here. And you can, have, you can feel that there's that edge right along the edge there, right? which, is, which is nice. Um, it, it's not as, it's a little beveled on, on the side here, but not tremendously so. A little more on, on, on the outside, maybe. Uh, but it's, um, it, it is there. Now, when you look on the um, top of the weld, okay, you can see the stitches. The stitches are clear, which you saw in the picture before. But what you don't have is you don't have any fudging. Um, so, you, so they've done a good job finishing the shoe, but it's kind of a no frills finish, okay? Like they wanted to make it functional, but not art, okay? Now, when you look at the, the trickers, okay, if you look carefully, you can see there is a fudging line there all the way around. You can see the stitching, but there is quite a lot of fudging, um, just decorative on the inside there, which just adds a little something on the, there is no bevel. There is an iron that was, it's basically ironed all the way around. It's very smooth. There's no ridge, just very, very smooth, very intentional to just make that smooth and finished. Okay. I like that better. 
I think that the fudging on the top is more meaningful to me because I can see it. Um, and I think that it's, um, it, it does kind of give it more of an art feel instead of more of a functional feel. Um, and this edge piece here where you, where you have the ridge uh, only really looks good when it's new. As soon as it, start, it starts to get wear, I feel like it loses something, it's harder to polish and it just doesn't look as clean. So that's my, uh, that's my take on that. Um, so anyway, um, from a price to value perspective, I can't get over the fact that Trickers has blind stitch soles. I can't, okay? For 35 pounds more um, with that, okay? Um, uh, I think that this is uh, a, a better shoe. I, I, I like the style a little bit better. I like the, the feel a little bit better. Um, I think if you look at the creasing in the leather, okay, you can see the creasing, very, very minute. You look here, you can see the creasing. Now this has more wear on it, but again, the creasing is very, very minute. I'm gonna say the leather quality is the same, okay? And so if the leather quality is the same, this has a more stylish last, okay? And this has um, an open channel for the stitching. Um, for 35 pounds, I would buy the trickers all day long. Right? Now, you may not like this color. And that's fine. This comes in dark brown and it comes in um, black okay? as, as alternatives. However, it does not come in deep mahogany. And this is why we collect shoes, because sometimes you want to wear deep mahogany. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. This is uh, my comparison and my shoe battle for Trickers versus Loke. And today, Trickers took the took the prize. Uh, they're just a um, uh, a higher quality, more stylistic shoe. Uh, and and this is Loke's uh, top of the line, the Loke Trinity. And it's a very very good shoe. Okay. Uh, what Trickers doesn't have that Loke does is the bevel waist. I like that better. Uh, what um, uh, the, the quality of the leather is comparable. Uh, the lasts are a little different. I like the style on the trickers better. I like the tongue on the trickers better. Um, and I like the sole on the trickers better. Uh, the, the heel on the loke is shorter. Um, and for some people and in some circumstances that may make a difference. Um, but for me, I think the, the big sole actually works pretty well. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with that. I think the wear on the soles will, will be about equivalent. And I feel like the walking feel of the soles is also equivalent. So that is my story and I'm sticking to it. What's your thoughts? Uh, did I miss something here? Did I feel like, did I underestimate the value of a piece that you think is more important? Let me know in the comments. I really appreciate the interaction and have a wonderful day.